Oh, hi, good morning. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, Darby, can you tell me what is it like to play the iconic character of Emily Elizabeth? Emily Elizabeth is such an iconic character that is so well known and loved by so many people because I mean, Clifford is so iconic and has been around for so many years. So it's just such an honor to bring this character to life. And I hope that I make everyone proud who's always loved Clifford. You did a fantastic job. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we're gonna go to Nicole Mucci from Multicultural Maven. Hi guys, how are you? Um, this question, I guess, Darby and Jack, this is something for both of you, but I was just curious, kind of what led you guys to want to come on to the project, um, you know, and tackle something that we essentially have just grown up with through the years and now, you know, our kids are going to be able to enjoy as well. I think for me, when I read the script, it really felt like it had done justice to the, the books and this iconic character, uh, the tone of it felt great it was funny but it also had a lot of heart and it felt like the kind of movie that uh, when I was a child I would have loved to have seen um, and so yeah I was uh, over the moon to come on board and be a part of it. Yeah for me as well I mean Emily's such an iconic character that like who wouldn't want to be a part of this um, live action version of this beloved book series. Next we'll go to Rhonda Chavez from Nanny Mom. Rhonda. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Uh, my question is, uh, how difficult was it uh, working with a th um, green screen dog? There were a few challenges. Um, there actually was a actual 10 foot red puppet that resembled, I mean, Clifford, of course, and these two puppeteers controlling him. And they were so talented. It was crazy how in the scene it felt like there was an actual dog. They did an amazing job acting him out. And there were a few challenges, especially with the emotional scenes, but um, I think it was pretty fun too to get that experience. Next up, we have Ranisha Springer from Queen Thrifty. Ranisha, can you hear us? I know your camera's off. All right, you know what, Renisha? You know what, we'll come right back to you next. Um, let's keep going with Melissa Pisa from the Mummyhood Chronicles. Hello, my question is, um, as the movie, I have a middle schooler too. What do you hope kids will learn from watching this movie? I know it's about inclusion and acceptance. What do you feel from that standpoint? I feel that it's very important for uh, kids to understand how important it is to accept others for their differences and to love um, to love people with their differences and you know just accept that and even accepting accepting themselves too as well if they're going through bullying it's hard to kind of find yourself and so I think it's important to know your worth and, and know yourself. Yeah I think it's also a very uncynical film um, and you know we'll teach uh, children that go and see it to not be judgmental and that you know a little bit of kindness can go a long way. Next up, we have Robin Davis from Mom the Magnificent. Hi, thanks for taking the time to chat with us today. My family and I really enjoyed this movie and I think other families will too. Um, so my question is for the both of you, how um, are you similar to the characters you portray in this film and how are you different? Me and Emily, I think are similar in a lot of ways. I mean, um, you know, we're obviously the same way and we both love our dogs very much. I have two dogs. I mean, she has one dog, which is like a bunch of dogs in one. And um, we both have like a special relationship and we love animals. And, um, you know, she's just such a fun, creative spirit. And I feel like we can be different in ways that uh, she's a little more mature than I can be at times, you know, and she takes us and she's very smart. I mean, I'm smart, but I think she enjoys school more than I enjoy school sometimes. <laughs> I think Uncle Casey is a big kid and I am definitely uh, a bit of a man child myself. Uh, he's not very punctual in the movie. I would say that is definitely a fault that I also have in real life. Um, and where we differ, uh, despite being um, this, you know, uh, bit of a waste of space, uh, Casey can drive. And unfortunately, in real life, I cannot drive. I don't have a driver's license, so I wouldn't be able to live in the back of the truck because I wouldn't be able to drive it. 
Okay, we're gonna go back to Renisha from Queen Thrifty. Hello, um, how was it working on a classic film like Clifford? Um, I grew up on Clifford, so it was an honor to see it, you know, um, remake and be able to hit the big screen. But how was it when you found out you were gonna be working on a classic movie? I mean, it was quite nerve wracking, to be honest. I remember when it first got announced in the trades, I got so many messages from friends of mine uh, that were living in the States and they were texting me and they were saying, you do not understand as a Brit, Clifford is so important a part of my childhood. You better not mess this up. And that was about <laughs> 10 or 20 people. So yeah, we definitely felt the weight of responsibility, making sure that we did justice to Clifford the Big Red Dog. Yes, definitely, for sure. I mean, Emily is such an iconic character alongside Clifford. So basically, I mean, all my friends knew Clifford was, and my grandma, uh, my grandmas especially loved Clifford. So they, I mean, were a little bit giddy about me playing Emily Elizabeth and are still just so excited. Thank you both. Next up, we're gonna go to Christy Reppy from Light, oh, Light's Camera Mom. <laughs> Hi, thank you. Um, the film is fantastic. There's so many comedic scenes as well as heartwarming scenes. What, for the both of you, what were your favorite scenes to film in the movie? One of my favorite scenes, I'm gonna have to say the scene where I get to drive uh, Casey's moving van. Um, I obviously can't drive in real life. And so I, I was like, oh my gosh, let's go. I get to be in a car chase. This is so cool. It's gonna be awesome. And then I get there. I don't actually get to drive, which is understandable. I mean, I was 12. I mean, I, I probably shouldn't be able to drive, but it, it looked like I actually was driving in the street. I mean, people would walk by and see me in the driver's seat and be like, is that a child in, in, the, in the driver's seat of a moving van? I'd be like, yeah, it is. You know, I'm just, I'm just cruising along, along down the New York street. So I have to say that was one of my favorite films. I mean, scenes. Um, for me, my favorite scene, I think was the, uh, the chase scene when the bad guys are trying to get hold of Clifford for the first time. And all of a sudden it turns into a Jackie Chan film and we've got this ridiculous fight scene in the deli, um, which was really uh, fun to choreograph. And I've always fancied myself as, um, you know, a frustrated action movie star. So uh, that was a really fun scene to film. Next up, we're gonna go to Heather with Pink Ninja Blogger. Hello, thank you for taking the time. My question is for Jack. Um, the, the film is great. Obviously, I took a lot away from it. I have an 11 year old, so it hit home. Um, but I really enjoyed the evolution of the character of Uncle Casey. So Jack, what was your favorite part of playing that role and just the changes? Yeah, completely. Um, for me, that was one of the major appeals is that he does go on this journey over the course of the film. And, you know, he lacks a little bit of self belief. Uh, he's, you know, possibly insecure. And that's why he puts up this defense of trying to be the funny guy all of the time, but you know, it's underpinned by this genuine insecurity and uh, you know, lack of self-belief. And over the course of the movie through his relationship with um, Emily Elizabeth, he's able to kind of, you know, grow up a little bit and mature um, and find this kind of inner strength. And that was really nice that, you know, he, he felt like a character that had been fully realized in three dimensions and uh, went on this kind of interesting trajectory over the course of the movie. Thank you. Next, we're gonna to go to Shell with not so, wait, not quite Susie, he, homemaker. Hi, thank you for being here. Um, my question is there's so much physical like slapstick comedy, which uh, we haven't seen a lot of in recent years and my family absolutely loves. So I was wondering for Jack, was there a lot of rehearsal behind that? And what was your favorite like silly scene that you did? Yeah, there's always a lot of rehearsals with those types of scenes. And when you're trying to kind of craft a, physical comedy set piece you do have to sort of plot it through quite carefully um the scene where clifford um you know blows up to 10 feet tall for the first time and uh we have to hide him in the apartment uh is the one that kind of springs to mind as being the most fun when i'm trying to keep clifford quiet and uh clifford starts wagging its tail and i'm hurled around the room that was a really fun sequence to put together but obviously there is a bit of a leap of faith because you know you're doing it with um, a puppet or in in that instance um, two um, of the props department holding a giant version of Clifford's tail on a stick wagging it from side to side 
So, you know, it feels very ridiculous when you're doing it. Um, and, uh, you know, when we saw it for the first time with uh, the CGI Clifford uh, put in in post-production, it was so relieving to see that it uh, all made sense and that it kind of worked as a kind of uh, physical set piece. Next up, we have Cami Allen from The Mama Diaries. Hi, Jack. Hi, Darby. I'm Cami Allen. I write for themamadiaries.com. Loved the movie. I watched it with my seven-year-old son and he loved it. And he is, the, no joke, the toughest critic that I know. And for him to like the movie, I mean, you guys really have something, I'm not lying. Um, I would like to know, um, there was a lot of funny scenes and if there was any particular funny scene on the set of the film that you could tell us about that was fun for you guys. I mean, that scene in the in the Bridwell's tent where we meet Clifford for the first time springs to mind as being quite a funny one because that was one of the rare days where there were actual animals on set all day. Um, and, you know, we were in this tent and it had all of these exotic animals. There was an actual sloth, which I don't think I'd ever seen a sloth before in my life. An albino python on the hat stand, which again was real. No acting required when I was like yelping every time the snake hissed next to my head because that snake was actually there. It was also like, disconcertingly close to the two guinea pigs which was just like very edgy on set seeing this massive snake and then these guinea pigs that were like quite close to it um fortunately we didn't have any accidents but um yeah that was a really fun day to actually have the animals on set yeah it was super fun and then when we filmed the uh, outside scenes like walking into it there was the monkey on the outside and that monkey her name is crystal and she was actually in um night at the museum she played like dexter or i think that was his name so i was honestly starstruck to meet the monkey and uh there uh, was funny pictures of her sitting like, sitting on my shoulder and like licking my cheek and i remember that day was super fun it's very depressing when you realize that the monkey on set has more imdb credits than you yeah 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 <laughs> uh, next up we're going to have uh nicole perez from five little words hi this is for both of you um how was the audition and uh what was your reaction when they gave you the phone call and said you got the part um where were you at when you got the phone call i remember uh getting the audition and my parents were like you know clifford's bigger dog they're making a live action i was like no way wait that's so cool and so i was super excited i put on the audition and then i got the call back and we did the screen test in new york city so they flew me and my dad out to new york city and they did um, uh, like one of like the big scene at the end as the um, audition, and I actually had to sit on like this fake Clifford bodice kind of thing, like like basically make it look like I'm sitting on Clifford, and and so that was really fun. I really enjoyed doing the screen test, and then I got the call, and I was just so excited. I was excited to be in New York, and I was honestly speechless. I was like, they really chose me to be this iconic character that everyone loves, and. I mean, Emily is a lot of people's childhood with Clifford. So I just felt so honored and blessed. I think I'd just come off stage when I found out that I'd got the part and I was doing um, some new material because I was warming up for a big tour. And I don't think it had gone particularly well. The audience had not given me much and I hadn't uh, got many laughs. I'd, I died that night. And so when I came off stage and I got the good news, it was a bit of a, a pick me up, but I certainly could have been more excited had I not just uh, done an hour and a half of jokes to people who were just sort of completely apathetic. All right, we're going to go back to Candy with another question, please. Hey, so you guys had some really amazing co-stars. Was there anyone that you were particularly starstruck with? I, mean, I think I, you go ahead, sorry. Um, well, I was very excited to meet John Cleese. He's like my comedy hero. And so, you know, the first time that he came onto the set, I was, you know, very, very nervous, but uh, he was an incredible presence and, and is a very fun uh, and uh, engaging uh, man. And uh, yeah, it was an honor to get to work with him. I was probably most starstruck with Keenan Thompson. <laughs> I mean, I've seen him in a lot of things and um, I would watch the skits that were appropriate for me of SNL. We had slightly different reference points with some of our co-stars. For example, we I was did, very yeah. excited about John Cleese and I was telling Darby, oh my God, he's in Faulty Towers, Monty Python, The Life of Brian, all flying over Darby's head. And then he appeared and she was like, oh my God, it's one of the ghosts from Harry Potter. Um, 
So, you know, we both approached him from slightly different angles. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Nicole, do you have another question, please? Nicole Mochi. Hey, Jack. So this question is for you. I was just curious because you're an English actor and in the movie, you know, you have an American accent, but your sister is British. So did you like in these scenes, like have any, did you have a hard time breaking out a character or were you kind of like, oh man, you know, like <laughs> we've reversed here. Yes. I mean, it was quite hard because yeah, when you're talking to someone in an English accent, it's quite easy to slip back into the English accent. And there were obviously quite a lot of English characters in it. And I think I'm a bit of a comedian, like whoever I'm talking to, I pick up the accent. So, you know, there was definitely some influence of uh, Darby Camp as well. Every now and again, I had a slightly Southern twang to my voice and I couldn't help it. I would just throw in a yarl every now and again. And well, <laughs> the director would have to stop and be like, Jack, you've, you've, you've gone all North Carolina again. So I had to keep an eye on it. The scenes with Rosie Perez as well. I mean, uh, imitating Rosie Perez's voice is, is, is another problem uh, when I'm doing my American accent. I actually did a show with Rosie Perez in the UK, which I wrote. And so I, I me and my writing partner had to write in Rosie's voice. And when we were doing it, and when we were sat in the writer's room, it was always my job to read out Rosie's lines. So I perfected doing the Rosie Perez voice, which then I showed to her on set and she was appalled by. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have time for one more. Rhonda Chavez. Uh, Clifford, being a rescue dog, have any of you rescued a I have rescued a pet, um, my dog Stan Lee. He's a rescue dog and he was actually at a kill shelter. And so when we found out that he was there, we went and got him right away because it's just so heartbreaking. And he's a miniature poodle, uh, funnily enough, but he also has Pekingese and Chihuahua. So he's a very um, funny mix, but um, he is so like dear to my heart and we love him so much. And yeah, he was actually on set with us when we were filming. Um, I have also had some rescue dogs when I was growing up. Uh, we had dogs that had been rescued from the Battersea Dogs Home, who are an amazing charity based out of London. And I think uh, when the film launches in the UK, we're going to be doing some collaborations with the Battersea Dogs Home, um, which is great because they, they do amazing work over in the UK. So yes, big fan of rescue dogs. Thank you. 